I'm going to drink 500 ml of orange slice C4. Oh. Can you stop, please? He's going to vomit. Oh, my God. Your face is turning a different <laughs> colour. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's going up my nose. Welcome to The Real Pod. It feels like an age. My name's Janie. I'm joined by Duncan Grieve, Alex Casey. We are all in the studio together for the great reunion. Welcome back to it. Duncan, are you going to vomit? I'm worried. I've got, I think I've got C4 coming out of my eyes and my nose. Been there. Uh, Duncan's <laughs> just just chugged uh, 500 mil of, of fizzy, like effervescent, like bubbly... Uh, energy it, drink? Yeah, it's like a sort of a professional grade athlete caliber, professional athlete caliber. This is what Dan Carter would drink before he kicks the winning try for the All Blacks, that, that sort of thing. Oh, don't kick a try. Don't You don't kick a try, do you? Do you like I hold know, on man. to this? I don't know much anymore. Wow. <laughs> I'm just having a cup of tea. It's nice to be here. I'm just a regular sized Red Bull and I'm feeling very inadequate. Um, hey, listen, it's it's a really exciting time. It probably feels exactly the same as it's always been, but we actually have big news. The biggest news. We've been, we think we've nailed it after an eight year trial of the podcast. <laughs> we've um, been in beta. We're ready, we're ready to launch proper. And here it is. So this that you're hearing now... The, the regular real pod, the uh, the TV recaps, the pop culture news, the real life chats, all of this is still going to be available to you, but you just have to pay for it. <laughs> just it's, a little bit. Just a tiny bit. It's a like, weird thing for us to be like really excited about <laughs> the, the, changing the financial model, but something had to give. Something had to give. Look, I, I tell you what, though. It's all part of a very exciting thing that's happening, which is we are on Substack as of right now. You can go to our Substack. It's called The Real Pod Extra, and you can go there uh, at therealpod.substack.com. There's going to be lots of free content, I should say. There's going to be lots of free content for everyone, like behind the scenes. There's more Real Pod Pits, than ever. More Real Pod than ever. We're going to have notes and chats and all those things that I've just learned that Substack does. Um and for our lovely paying subscribers who want to contribute to uh, the making of this podcast, you will also get this version of the podcast, the weekly recaps and so on, as uh, an exclusive weekly drop in the in the paid subscriber category. Right? Wow. Is that a good I think it's a good deal. But Jane, can we still get some of the real pod for free? Of course you can, Alex. Of course. We're not monsters. We're not <laughs> disappearing from the feed completely. You're still going to get your weekly dose of the real pod, but it is, as of Thursday, going to be the real pod presents Remember When, which is us revisiting our pop culture past and we're leaning into nostalgia, deep diving into the brilliant and bizarre pop culture moments that have to find our weird little country. So you can still get that. You can still you can keep your addiction alive there. Um, and if you want a bonus, you know, sign up for the, the extra. So this right here, we're about to recap Traders week one. This is the, the only free version of this you'll get in from next week. If you want to keep up with our Traders recaps, you've got to, got to sign up. Okay? Okay. We, I've, well, we, I've got it. <laughs> we believe we believe in you, Cornies. We believe in you. Go to the and substack. Hopefully, you believe in us. Sense. You know, yeah. Like, this is, be, we would we would love to have you come along on this journey. Um, but the remember when is going to be like we're really excited about it. There's some um, an amazing treasure trove of New Zealand pop culture history that we're going to be diving into. We totally. basically had a big long meeting, and we realised. The present moment, it's okay, yeah. but back is better. Back is so we much better. We want to go back, and so we're delving back. We don't know how far back we'll go. We haven't put a limit on it. No. We'd also love to hear ideas, right? If Absolutely. people want us to cover a particular pop culture moment. <coughs> Wayne. 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 Uh, Wayne's been on a wee social media break. He's back, and what good timing. That's yeah. all Amazing. I can say. Uh, if you want to know who Wayne is, join the Real Pod Corner on Facebook. We've also got a Discord where you can do live chats of TV shows and such. I think we need to talk about the traders. Oh, we need to get stuck into it. So this is coming out. You would have just watched episode one and two. Yeah. This is, we hope, going to be the big new reality show. It has been massive in the UK. We've all watched the UK version, mm -hmm. correct? It outrated Love Island, which is just like that doesn't even make sense. Completely impossible to do, as Bonkers. far as I was aware. And it's a murder mystery, like no other. 
What do we think? Uh, okay, I was nervous because I loved the UK one so much that I wouldn't even watch the US or the Australian one because I didn't think they'd be able to do a good enough job. So when I heard that we were doing one, I was like, oh, this is, and we, I'm going to have to watch this and I'm, I'm not going to like it. But I, I, I love... Well, I love the hokey New Zealandness of it. It's that, it's the same kind of CTI um, vibe of like, I didn't think I was going to like celebs on there, but then like dropping the mask a bit, and I think we're going to see them just completely lose their minds. Well, I think I, I, I agree. I mean, look, one of the things that makes the UK version so compelling is how opulent it is. Like, it's it's quite jarring uh, for a reality show to be so just beautifully crafted and and the locations to be like dazzling and then you come to the new zealand one and they've tried they've given it a good old kiwi try but just everything about it is just sort of just cutely quite good but not that good like even down to like the the little bars of silver <laughs> it's silver <laughs> if you can't do gold you know you those, are, those are polystyrene right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> like he's walking around holding them they're like floating <laughs> off into the air also how the uk one is like it's shot in the depths of winter highland scotland beautiful moody castle Let's shoot in the middle of summer in an Airbnb <laughs> somewhere out west. <laughs> yeah, that we've used for the location of multiple real, uh, reality shows right. historically. Bachelor? I yeah. feel like it's a bachelor pad. Oh, look, they all look oh. the same to me. But the, the, my, my, I think what epitomises what you're saying, Duncan, is the, um, the cloaks that they wear. They look like cloaks. They look perfectly good cloaks, but they look like cloaks from Look Sharp. They've just got a bit of a sheen to them, a bit of a cheapness. The draping isn't as heavy as you'd get on the UK version. Um, you know, I, I think they, they're they sort of representative of the New Zealand version. Mm. And, and when they're sort of like, you know, they have to do that obviously very staged kind of looking at a thing in the house and going, oh, that's amazing. And the thing is... It's like real, it's a real budget. Lamp. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's like that is in every sort of chain pub in in like the the in the west. Like you, can, no one's excited about it. <laughs> and the celebrity, they give it a crack, but there's no, you don't buy it at all. But it doesn't detract from it. It just feels like it's ours. Mm. It does. Mm. That's so true. I want to know who's the fella in the portrait. Cause they it, keep, it's Paul, no, it's Henry. Paul Henry. It doesn't look but Paul it's Henry. so badly photoshopped. It's like a really tightly cropped it's like, zoom in. It's like Paul we Henry. did it. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's a pic monkey. Yeah, it's a pic monkey classic <laughs> done on a phone. I'm, I love that the opening line is something like. 15 strangers who've never met come together. It's like complete <laughs> strangers. Half of those celebrities have spent multiple New Year's together. <laughs> like, there's just no way that, that Mike and Brooke Howard Smith have not shared a batch. <laughs> also, Brooke Howard Smith straight away is like, Dan's one of my best mates. <laughs> And Hilarious. then Matt Heath, Matt Heath and is like, he's on Hodaki, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Or is he on the rock? But, 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 oh, but, then, but then uh, Jay, Jay Reeve, who's married to Anna Reeve, also, like, th these people they're, are they're moving basically in the same family. Circles. Mike Pudu <laughs> and, and Matt Heath go to the same workplace every single day of their lives. Like, mm. <laughs> These people are closer than we are, <laughs> yeah. certainly closer than most, like, fraternal twins. Like, this is <laughs> such a ludicrous uh, assemblage, but I do adore it. Um, but let's just suspend disbelief for a moment, and we'll just buy into the fact that, that these people have never met before. We've got a bunch of celebs and a sprinkling of normies, um, and quite predictably, having been on a reality show where there are a bunch of normies and a bunch of celebs, the celebs are all clicking together right away and being like, oh, there's a person I don't recognise from the television or radio. Eliminate them. Eliminate them. <laughs> <laughs> I love the attention to the psychic as well. Just I know. Early oh, my on. God, the psychic. <laughs> what it says about people's just like implicit belief in psychic abilities. Like they're like, I can't, no, no. Can't, be, can't be doing with that. No. She'll, she, she knows. She's going to win. She knows. She was so <laughs> off the mark. It's so crazy. Like what, how, if anyone from Sensei Murder ran for public office, they're romping ho. Like scary. The level of... Like, Eric, if you wanted to illustrate that our education system is falling apart at the seams, the fact that everyone on the show seems to think psychics are real <laughs> is like the, the most perfect uh, illustration of that. But also what a missed opportunity, right? Because you, you, you need a psychic on the show and you're also having celebrities on the show. Why are you not having Calvin Crookshank, Crookshank. or Sue Nicholson on there? I'm sure that they must have some... Uh, <laughs> this is my honest opinion, based on watching Sensing Murder, that they would have certain 
just they, they profile like people with a particular belief system that would be hard to kind of edit around their, their sort of public mm, statements right. on just I'm being generalizing here and making certain heroic assumptions, but we all know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, they'd probably be wandering off into the bush to talk to spirits all the time, you know, trying to solve yeah. a moida, an that, actual moida. Right. There will be. I mean, that's a big, big property. Yeah. Um, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a night on Airbnb. But there's going to be some bodies there. Can we just talk about how good it is to see Colin Bathura Jeffrey back on? So screen? good. I mean, he is our, he is our. Like favourites. God had his amuse. Right? Yeah. Forever. Yeah. We've had Colin's, you know, Colin's cranny, an essential part of the real pod. He's he featured on the real so, pod a number of times. Mm. So good. Isn't he just like so magnetic, immediately just giving the quotes that you want? Mm. He's bought into the world of it and his outfits. He, oh. he belongs in this world. This is exactly the show for him. He's delivering the zingers. He's just got his very calm, steady voice on and his knowing smile. And, and his piercing stare. Yeah. Mm. I mean, he broke Lauren in the worst way with that question. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, but we'll we, we, which we will get to. Can we also talk about Paul Henry? Oh, yes, Speaking of course. people who are back on our screens, he is actually the most luxury thing about it. Like, the way that he talks about $1,000 and, and sort of... He's playing this kind of Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake kind of guy, a sort of a Takapuna pump house theatre version of it. And he's playing it exquisitely. And just what, the way that he's like, oh, look at these cute people getting excited about a thousand pitiful dollars, I, <laughs> you know, which I just sort of throw away in disgust as not being a large enough <laughs> sum. It, it's, it's so cool to have him back. And he's just so perfectly cast for that role. He is definitely perfectly cast for this. He's r- relishing it, you can tell. Um, should we talk about the people who like we've, we've there's a corny in there? Dylan Reeve, he's written, oh. he's in the corner, he's written for the spin off. I mean, this is two reality shows in a row with a, a spin off star. That's true. Never. I was terrified. Well, three if you count Doghouse with uh, with Chris Schultz. Chris Schultz. Oh of my course. god. Yeah. Um, I was terrified he was going home. Uh, mm. that he was going to be first murdered. Because he understands conspiracies. He oh can yeah. Read people. He's very intelligent. And that can be an issue. It can be well, an yeah, issue. The got to dumb it down. Well, it's also that the celebrities will be like, I don't want this person who understands the psychics aren't real on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go, True. mate. And the things he could dredge up in like the deep corners of Reddit about some of these people, who knows? Oh, my God, know? imagine the dossiers he already has on all of his <laughs> fellow, uh, all the things they've said under their, their like kind of burner account. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he knows it all. <laughs> So we've got, well, as we've mentioned, we've got Dylan, we've got the psychic whose name I can't quite remember. Kimberly. We've got, um, we've got Robbie, the hairdresser. I love Robbie. Isn't she adorable? But would you have her do your hair? Yes, <laughs> I thought she looked amazing. Would she have those pigtails? The, the, I was the like, baby no, spice. But I was like, your hair's not even been brushed, love. No, but it's, it's a builder's house. Bil- a builder's house is never done. A hairdresser has <laughs> never got time to okay. touch their own hair. I'll tell you that. I mean, I would definitely have her be my hairdresser just for the chats. Oh. You know? She, uh, she looks in the mirror. And knows things about people. I honestly think hairdressers and makeup artists, they know everything about everyone in the world. If you need to know something about a celebrity, talk to a TV makeup artist. Yeah. <laughs> if only they were a little cheaper, you know? Mm. It's a high price to pay these days to go get your hair down to get some goss. That's true. Uh, now, who else have we got? I'm not going to list them all because I haven't got them all written down, but off the top of my head, there was the gamer guy who ran off with the 10K. Sam that Fury. was so clutch. So good. Uh, like, wouldn't you? Yes. Look, like, I'm not good at maths, money. but that's quite good, isn't it? <laughs> it is quite it's good. It's quite a good amount of the prize money. The opportunity cost there, of course, is your time on the telly. You know, yeah. it's not mm. just about the prize money. It's also about, like, your profile and so on. He's just like, mate, I'm a ga- I couldn't dream of making this sort of money. Yeah. Let's take it and run, and I don't have to shame myself out on the telly. Win win. The risk of it, though, is imagine if you took off to do it and then someone else did it and you were just so slow. Like, that was like, I was thinking about that scenario, and I was like, that would be real shameful. Because then you've shown yourself to be, you know? Like, a, like a, a buyable for $10,000. I, I yeah. am buyable for $10,000, by the way. I was surprised that the other, I mean, it does tell you really more about their motivations. It's like, this is, this is a bump, this is screen time, this is a big hit. Less that is more valuable to them than ten thousand in 
in pieces of silver. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, why is silver so funny to I me? I know, and also the fact they call them silver bars. Like, you feel like if they're gold, they'd be like gold ingots. Like, do you have an yeah. ingot for me? But you got one of those silver bars? It's like they're talking about a K-bar. Oh, it's delicious. Is, yeah. Why are they, they're just so budget? I, I want some, I just me. wanted someone to bite into one. I just want to know <laughs> what it is. <laughs> it is not silver. I think we, we know that yeah. much for certain. Um, but, you know, the other thing is you remember the UK series. The people who went home on that first day, that very first lineup, came back. Mm. So he might just be a genius, take the 10K, uh, with a chance of actually being brought back into the game at some point. Mm -hmm. And consider this, there's some people doing their sums in their heads. Those celebrities are getting a daily rate, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're going, okay, yeah, I could take that 10K or I could pick up my X many K a day. Uh, All I have to do is be here for a couple of days, get some screen time, raise my profile, a few more Twitter followers, and I get 10K, you know, and get to enjoy playing the game a little bit. It is funny that they're not playing for charity. <laughs> like, I yeah. love it. How I do love we address it. this? I want there to be no... no char- <laughs> this is terrible. I don't think anyone should play for charity. Like, so our celebrities are not well compensated by international standards. They're basically probably about median wage, is my working assumption. Don't Don't make them... Do stuff for charity. Like, they're allowed to just keep it. Are you saying we should start a GoFundMe for (laughs) Matt Heath? (laughs) Well, maybe not Matt Heath. I I have some idea of what Matt Heath's on, and I think it's quite good. But a bunch of the other ones, I'm like, give them the money. Yeah, I I I think all of these could find something useful to do with the money that isn't just, like, throw it in their big pile of money, Mm. you know? It it does speak to the shitness of New Zealand, you know? Oh, yeah. That's absolutely charming. And there that, was a great profile of Kings, actually. Did you read the yeah. Kings profile? And it was all about, you know, his massive explosion onto the scene in 2017 or 2016. But then that doesn't always pay for the rest of your life. No, and it's the classic lotto lotto winner spending all their money story. Well, you know? well it's also, like, what is the prize for a win? The maximum possible prize. It's $70,000. So it's approximately half of a house deposit. You know, like, it's it's a it's a... Nice sum of money, but in a proper country, that's a million dollars or half a million dollars. Seventy thousand. It's also just like it's not seventy-five thousand. It's not a hundred thousand. It's a real like that is a, an accountant just saying, just keep shaking their head <laughs> until the, the the Excel spreadsheet finally makes sense for the for the production. Yeah, it is two hundred, right? Obviously, the U- I think the Australian I, one was two hundred k. Right, right. The 70. UK one might have been. I feel like they're doing it based on our pop- like population. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. our population, the percentage of population difference is how much prize money you get. Um, one other question: Where do they stay? This is something I thought. I think you, you it's see at all, home in bed. You see them all walking out. And then I think they go around the back and climb back through the bathroom window <laughs> and they all sleep in that lounge. <laughs> I think it's at home. The show necessitates them not not all staying in the same accommodation. Like for it to be genuine, they got they need to not be able to talk to each other after the moment they leave there. You know, I'm surprised at how strict they were on Treasure Island at making things as real and like no phones, no access to the outside world, keeping people from each other. Um, mm. as they did. So I would, I actually, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here and I think they've kept them apart. It sounds like the way Justine Smith talked about her first night, that they were very much shut in a room and mm. she had nothing, no contact. I mean, obviously no phones. I mean, you can see how you would go crazy yeah. Oh yeah, within 24 hours. Oh, yeah. Like, just crying. Just totally, totally. Um, well, especially with as much booze as they're being fed. Like, did you note the total <laughs> consumption for the first day? Like, let's assume that the drinks are what they present as. Mm. There was champagne, red and white wine, martinis. And what was that green? Was that absinthe? I'm assuming that was chartreuse <laughs> or absinthe. Both of those are around 75%. And, uh, like, and I think then they went back to champagne later on. I was like, this is... That is a fucking boatload of some very strong booze. But like, is there like, and it made me wonder, like, is there a legal limit for someone to be able to consent, actively consent to being on TV? Like, it's, it was if again, like, you can like a make a fake martini or red wine or whatever, but 
If it was what it looked like, holy shit, they were putting some away. Mm. Well, Love Island famously had to remove the alcohol and, and the Bachelor in the US after some, you know, that's right, just alcohol infused bad stuff. Um, they've had to kind of make it very clear that they're drinking like apple juice and they get their like one glass of bubbles a day kind yeah, of thing. They say alcohol free prosecco. Oh, yeah. I know, over and over. I not, also not noticed. so at the lodge. Not so <laughs> at the lodge. Well, even when they walk to the, it's like <laughs> I'm sure there's like a second guy in been a book in this like when they walk down to the banishment room they walk past a giant wall of wine yeah, bottles it's, like, a it's just a booze hag house <laughs> but then at the other end what I found charming as well is there's been a few times where the celebrities are walking around just with takeaway coffee cups. okay I need I'm to like, talk about this I know, what's going sustainability on they look so shit well do you know what I you know do you know who the celebrity was who had the takeaway coffee cup Mike it was Mike, Mike and Colin has one at the very start okay I didn't notice Colin's but I noticed Mike and it was on the second day so we're well into production then he's not brought it just from you know he's not just uh, brought it as he turned up for his call time for the first time but uh, who was he talking with he was talking with Dan the poker player who had like a beautiful crystal whiskey glass type thing going on and I'm like is Mike falling into the same trap again where he's like he doesn't know if he's supposed to be taking from the crew unit (laughs) or the contestant unit and he's accidentally gone and got his crew takeaway coffee uh, I forgot every time. I forget about that. I go for months at a time forgetting about the Mike Puru I, b- brought bachelor lunch. <laughs> I don't go a day <laughs> not thinking about yeah. it. I'm so happy to see Mike there. Like it's oh, just, isn't it good? He's so adorable. And he's onto it too. He's seeing things yeah. that other people are not seeing. To be fair, like this... This has, this has the potential to fall apart this season. Like they they instantly tagged Lauren. Like they this completely like she could not have screamed it louder. Um, and and if I'm any kind of a like I'm eliminating a, a poker player just for gen, for, for any kind of well, a of reason. Course. So then it's just going to be Matt Heath, who also seems to be like screaming that he is <laughs> he's a traitor I agree. by virtue of like doing a joke pick yeah. to save his fellow traitors. Whenever so, they're talking about the traitors and Matt Heath is in the conversation, he is doing Jim Halpert straight to camera, <laughs> Cheshire Cat, like grin. I'm like, he's like <laughs> emanating it. <laughs> so what happens if, if the first three rounds they just eliminate the traitors? Is that then just a nice time? Oh, like, they'll convince them to bring on. They'll convince them to seduce. <laughs> It'll be such a New Zealand thing for for the um, the faithful to just pick the, the you know the first three, just eliminate the three traders, and then just just sort of sit around and we have this like you know the traders becomes this amazing multi decade franchise, and there's this curiosity on the Wikipedia page about New Zealand only had one season. It lasted three episodes and they were never allowed to, but like there was a sort of an international treaty saying that, that country is too stupid for traders. Maybe they could do that thing like they when you're in like a Dunedin flat where you do a lock in and they just have to finish all the booze in the house and just whoever's left wins. It's like it's a like a it hands it becomes a radio traders. promo. Yeah, yeah. Like a how long oh, can you live Matt on the billboard? Matt Heath will romp home again. Hey listen, on Matt Heath how is he 50? Yeah. When that shot up on the graphics, it makes sense when I think about my age and how, you know, but I that just rocked big me hat. to my core. Wear a, a big cap. But there's a whole bunch of, like, young youth brand celebrities, like Brooke Howard Smith and Mike Pudu amongst them, who are suddenly 50, and it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is it, it's, and, it, and it feels like the fact they had the age was like, this, you're now moving into a new demographic. You, mm. You're on, on the grown-up shows. I did. That was something I wondered. Like, is there anyone under 30 on the show? I feel Lauren, like they could have got... and she gone. And she gone. They're <laughs> like, none of that. <laughs> How old's Chris? She seems young. Oh, she tracks young. She's like tw- late there. 20s, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I feel like they could have done with maybe, you know, a couple more sort of, I don't know, influencer types or This is a, this is a TV show. They, 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 they know their demographic. Also, we, we have to just use the same people that we've used before again and again and again. It's, yeah. just how, it's just how our ecosystem works. I wonder if, like, just thinking about the ratio of celebrities to normals, uh, maybe that's just how the, the general population, like maybe there are more celebrities <laughs> than normals now. Like if you, if there's like a <laughs> stats NZ survey has like a subcategory of what, what is our current ratio? And it's like, oh, fuck, we've got over 50%. This is a, this is a real, we're depopulating with normals. Soon they'll, they'll, they'll just be bred out of existence. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just something to consider. Also how there's some of them who are like, 
Like a Sam Smith, where does he fall? He's sort of celebrity adjacent. Dylan Reeve is kind of celebrity adjacent. Uh, same with proximity to Ferris. Same, same, yeah. Well, I well, wasn't actually on the show, but same with <laughs> same with Dan. You know, the poker player is like no, very noted in his Dan Fury. circles. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah. I mean, they're all, and and Robbie is a hundred percent a celebrity after this. Yeah. Mm. There's no doubt about that. We talk a little bit about how the show goes. So they come on in, they all get settled in. Paul comes and does his thing with his little cane and his little oh, hat. Little hat. Um, how many hats do you think he's got in his trailer? Oh, I've counted at least like four different ones. More than so Cassie far. Roma, which is saying a lot. That's cute. Yeah. It's true. Uh, and he, he basically tells them how the game's going to go and that first things first, we need to pick our traitors, interviews everyone. They sit around a room, yada, yada, yada. He picks Lauren, he picks Dan, the poker player, he picks Matt Heath. I'm disappointed. I wanted more normies in there. Or a normie. I wanted, um, who's Darth Vader? <laughs> Darth, Darth Vander. Oh, Darth Vander. Vander. Darth Vander. I wanted her in yeah, there. Yeah, same. I, I, I also, th- like, sorry not to harp on my the first, they, they could all be picked at first. They, they just seem real pickable. Yeah, I reckon mm. too. You know, and, and I think if they'd had a sort of a mix of, you know, a, a few more sort of blend into the background types, I think it would have, just ch- changed the feel of it, but mm. um, yeah, L- I mean, L- Dan and Matt Heath. I, I feel it feels bad to harp on Lauren, but my God, has anyone ever just exploded as a <laughs> as a their opportunity on a show like, like she did this? Like, like she just kind of melted as the the day went on. I think it was Colin. I I swear to God. So Colin asked her like. What, what, was it basically? Are you a tra- Are you the traitor? He said, he said, "Who are you going to murder tonight?" Yeah. yeah, that's right. It was incredible, and it with the Colin eyes, <laughs> no one can survive. That's unsurvivable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she did not survive. She just and she was just like, "Why would I? Why would I do that? Yeah, no. <laughs> why, why would I do that? It's such a funny." <laughs> also, this weird thing where she's like, "I'm a dancer. I've been lying my whole life." I was like, <laughs> "Have you? What? <laughs> what, what have you done, Lauren?" <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also love how Robbie, who's not a traitor, is talking about how we knocked someone off. It's good. That was we amazing. <laughs> and didn't get eliminated. Totally it. incredible. But it's such a tale. Like, those little fumbles can absolutely destroy you. Remember in the UK one, I think the first person to go home was someone who just didn't cheers. Yeah. At the first yeah. cheers, was too slow to cheers. And they were like, <gasps> <laughs> you're out. As if that's what a traitor would do. Like, it's so funny. Um, I what else? What else happened? I can't. I don't know where one episode started and one episode ended. Oh, I have a theory over that. I have a theory about why it could be good if they get all the traders out immediately, because they've already like bonded so much. They had that big hoorah, like weird <laughs> kind of like tribal moment. <laughs> they had a lot of booze. If then. they keep getting rid of the traders and they become really tight as faithfuls, but then some of them will have to turn. Yeah. And then that will be like even more tense. Yes. You know that they would have had this bonding moment and now they know. Like, that's why I feel like they might be saving Justine Smith. Because mm. I thought, you know, she obviously wanted it so badly and they didn't choose her for mm. some reason. But maybe it's because they know she'll be better later on as like a, a ring-in, maybe? I think um, I think Colin would be an obvious traitor, so I wouldn't pick him as mm. a, a, a producer-wise. I honestly think Mike Poro would be a genius move. Yeah, no one's going to suspect no. that it's Mike. I mean, he covered, up, he covered up himself, nearly crapping on the news. He is prepared to go to great lengths, <laughs> we'll put it that way. He will do anything for the job, you know? Yeah, there's never been a more dedicated soldier of the old media entertainment world than Mike Puddu. We get to the challenges. Look, I, the challenges, I feel a little bit about the challenges in traders like you do with the the um, the charity challenges yeah, yeah. in, in CTI. The first one, they have to run around and look for some coins or something. <laughs> in the UK one, don't they have to like... Traverse a loch and, like, <laughs> and light up a giant wicker man. This like beautiful, amazing scene. And this one, Paul Henry's like, I've hidden some coins <laughs> around the lounge. <laughs> <You're talking> Find <laughs> them. <laughs> the, the amount of like production prep time on that is about thirty seconds. <laughs> there, there was also the um, the Cinco the Seven at the game of pool. Oh yeah, challenge, yeah. Which the, the traders were like so fiending for for their thousand dollars. I was just like, yeah, can I just join in your pool? Let's make it a game of threes. And, and, and yeah, Morris like, game of three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck on like a. 
I, I like an A3 size like pool table. It's just the most ridiculous yeah. scenario. It's like one of those joke ones you play on the toilet. I know. <laughs> and also at this point, the traders don't know who each other are. So, but there's a very big process of elimination that can goes on here. Mm. Anyone who didn't pick up a pool stick and aim a, at a ball is not a trader. But then, like, Sweet Kings is in there, you know? I know, I know. That's, crack. And I guess ultimately they're about to find out, so it doesn't make a difference one way or the other. And they didn't know that their challenge was going to be the same as the other but traders. But the traders not know. Not at the pool, at not point, at the pool they know. table, they didn't. Aye. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. I will say at this point in the, the mixer pool table thing was when I got a big red flag where I realised it doesn't seem like they have any hidden cameras <laughs> in this show. It seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, someone from production will be listening, but it seems like it's like a roaming crew. And I think in the UK one, it's shot more like Love Island style, right? Where you've got just heaps of cameras hidden everywhere. So things can feel more sneaky and more treacherous. And I'm worried <laughs> about what having like a travelling crew around that house is going to mean for But that, Maybe that's why chats. you have celebrities on is that they just know that they're, they're shooting something here. The thing is, they shoot so much reality at their house, maybe they can afford to rig it and amortise it across every making every single reality show at the same house. True. But you can so tell by the camera work, as you say, that it's off the shoulder or, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I think I think, um, I think you're right. In Treasure... I hate to back, it's my only experience. On Treasure Island, it was always very obvious when mm. there was a conversation happening and the cameras, like, ran over to catch it. Uh, but the difference here is that you will get conversations with the faithfuls as well that are of interest and you'll get, because they don't know. They don't know who, you know, they just assume the person that they're talking to is also a faithful. Mm. So it's still going to cast shadow of doubt on pretty much every conversation is of interest. That's true. Um, I don't know. I just, again, we just have to, we, we can't change it. We can't change <laughs> we can't, it. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can we we talk about the meeting and the thing? I feel like they knew before they saw each other. It didn't feel like a, they did, it was nowhere near as much as the traitors when they were revealed to each other. It was nowhere oh, near yeah. as much of a like a shock, surprise giggles as the UK one, which was adorable when they did the really big kind of like dark walking up with their lamps and then whipped off their uh, their cloaks and they just like cracked up and we're like oh my god this is so exciting and we're kind of childishly giggly about it whereas yeah. I feel like Matt and Dan really just faked that they're kind of like oh it's you and when Lauren <laughs> and then when Lauren yeah. walks in they don't even put their hoods back on they're just like put yeah. their heads down <laughs> like I can still see you Matt yeah, with, it's well, not if you shut your eyes, people can still see you. <laughs> well, that's why, again, it feels sort of joyfully budget. Like the 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 paper coffee cup that you referred to earlier. The fact that Lauren's name is spelled eighteen different ways. <laughs> like no one from production is correcting this the spelling of the of the slates and just doing a quick retake for for the reveal there. You know, and, and again, like the, the the fact that he just keeps his foot yeah. on, it's, just, it's, it's like the it's like forgetting the the final rose on the bachelor. You know, we, we just don't, we are not appropriately staffing these things. Also, they're not using people's surnames. Like they're trying to trick us all into like not fully knowing who these people are. And you know, it's just like right. just Lawrence, just Brody, just you know, yeah, yeah, trying just to keep, keep like make it Brody. as if they're all on the same level playing field. Brody would be a fun trader. Can we talk a little bit about Paul Henry's lexicon? <laughs> Gather around, Lieblings. Oh yeah, no, I'm into that. Chickadees. I'm into it. It's good. So I feel like it. at the start of the episode, um, he almost comes out a bit too mean, yeah. and then he kind of comes into this gleeful sort of like Wonka-esque type Oh character. my God, it's, it's so, so Wonka. Wonka. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like gleeful. I just love it. I, he's, I don't know, I hate it's to just, say it. I, I think know. he's really good. He's incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's a very kind of sweet, generous, like Paul. No, no one's given him notes. He's just like... I'm just going to sort of vibe out this kind of weird 1920s <laughs> serial killing snake oil salesman fucking top hat yeah. thing. <laughs> and it works. And it's just, he's entertaining himself and it's very entertaining for us. You need someone who has the sort of arrogance to be able to play that role and not kind of feel any sense of shame or anything, you know, just like to completely own it and relish in it. And he's, and, and you do kind of want to be a little bit like scared of that person too. Mm. But, but Paul Henry is like almost like a globally interesting celebrity host and that he's independently wealthy to the point where he only does things for fun. He can't be fired. There is no career consequence that has any meaning to him. He's like Simon Cowell almost. Like he, if he's doing it, it's n for non-financial reasons. And he has no like relationship with his career. 
that's weird. Mm. And it's that's kind of manifest in his performance. Mm. Like it's very like, well, I'm going to do Paul Henry stuff and I will not be getting any new, you can't give me any notes. This is just what, I, what I'm doing here. <laughs> that is the deal. And they just have to say yes or no. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. I think you can tell even when, I, I don't know if this was, if they knew he was the host or not, but it genuinely seemed like he was a surprise to a lot of the celebrities when he first walked out with his cane. He's a celebrity amongst celebrities. He's a celebrity to celebrities. I mean, yeah. There's not many people we've got in New Zealand like that. I'll tell you who's not blown away or intimidated by his celebrity, and that's Robbie. When it came to the, the confessions, <laughs> the confessions challenge, and she goes into the confessions booth and he's like, do you have anything to confess? And she says, oh, we don't have time for that rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> What's the verse? She's so She's good. incredible, yeah. It's, we got a real one here. Which is like, I've got, four, I, I'm a single mum of four kids. I've been lying my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome. What a find. Like, yeah, she's yeah. great. She's great. Um, that challenge, the, the, the funeral challenge was funny. <laughs> easy? Like, yeah. disturbingly easy. I did love the turn of the heads. I want to know who those people were. Where do they get them? Because I'm like... Stars, extras. I don't know. <laughs> Star? With a Z. True. Star from the Lodge. Simon Day, Explore. <laughs> I don't know. Deep Cat for really, three people. Really deep. <laughs> True, though. <laughs> I hope he's still listening. <laughs> there was a weird thing, actually. Paul Henry said a real weird thing. So they're at this fake funeral for Kimberly, and there's all these people in gold masks. And Paul Henry's like, this is like many of my fantasies coming true at once. And I was like, what fantasies? Oh, like, if you, like, what did you just say? Yeah, <laughs> don't, ask, actually mean? don't ask the question because you don't want to hear the answer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that was, um, I don't know, just too easy, just to, like, find something about a snake in the Bible verse. Oh, find someone who's got some sort of snake on their clothing. Mm. I recall in the UK one it being a little bit more cryptic, like they had to kind of decode what yeah, the verse Yeah, they came meant. up with the actual riddles and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Again, New Zealand, not the brightest. Like, Who's got a Bible? <laughs> we forgot to do a thing. <laughs> but it still has that. Like, I don't know if you have this. Well, like, I have like a physical. Like, I get chills, full body chills, often watching the traders. Yeah. The spookiness, the masks, the hoods. Like, there's just the world of it. I think is powerful. When Paul Henry stood up at the front of that church and was like, "Welcome, Nieblings," or whatever it was mm. he said, and all the all their heads turned in full one eighty, full one eighty, yeah. synchronized. That was my chill moment. Mm. I was like, "That's good. Well done. Well choreographed." Yeah, yeah. And there's something about the that that round table where when they have to start attacking each other, or or well, just attacking Lauren, as it, as the case <laughs> may be, that that gladiatorial sort of mind. Fuck format is very intense. Mm. There's no no way around it. I'm really interested to see when they send a faithful home and get upset about it. That's always like really rough, you know. Like it's victorious if you send a trader home. Never seen it happen, you know, in the first week. <laughs> 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 but it's great when they've like gotten really close to people and then they start second guessing someone, send them home, and they're like, "Well, I was a faithful," <laughs> and they all just like fall into a puddle of tears. Can't it like, yeah. feels like such a judgment on your character. <laughs> <laughs> you sent home as a faithful. <laughs> That's kind. I mean, oh no. I mean, do we need to talk about Lauren? Got full disclosure. Fell asleep during the banishment. Oh, no. <laughs> Woke up Yay. just as everyone was clapping. And, like, we got her. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I think I know what's happened here. But uh, but Sam Smith made a big call, right, because Lauren's one of his friends. Yeah, she used to drop him home after Dancing with the Stars. I mean, Sam Smith, very known in the industry, is mm. like the warm-up guy yeah. for every show. Lovely, hilarious guy. Written a children's book, too. Written a children's book. Um, and now backstabber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I actually think, like, I was nervous about the fact that over half the cast have close relationships with each other. But maybe it makes it more interesting. Because this is New so. Zealand. We're very polite. These people will probably have to collab on, like, a, you know, collagen brand deal later in, <laughs> later in their Later careers. in the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, actually kind of hurting some of these relationships mm. could be really tense well, for Well, you could see Lauren getting visibly upset, even though she was a traitor and had basically been carrying around a saying, saying, I'm a traitor <laughs> for most of the day because these were like friends who are out here and, and that, that to, to give Dan credit like he sort of had to do it with hindsight and again Matt Heath Sam, you know, Sam, 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 Sam sorry when, when he um, no no Dan the poker player right? oh right yeah I mean I was when, when Dan oh, yeah. was, was like asleep. I'm going to knife my fellow traitor because I can see which way the wind's blowing uh, you could see Lauren just crushed by it um, but then but she, she also gave him this like 
look like, but you you know I am a trader. It's like, yeah, okay, okay. cool. And so now you're, 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 you're all, <laughs> any kind of vaguely kind of attentive observer knows exactly who the traders are at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, confirmed her status, confirmed his status. <laughs> and then Matt Heath is just like, me too. <laughs> Imagine if she just stood up at the end and was like, yeah, I'm a traitor. And so is that person. Like, like he just yeah, ruined yeah. the game. <laughs> yeah, like the Joker. Just. I do like it. That happened in the UK once sometimes. They would just throw out like a curveball at the last minute. Kieran, Not Kieran, specific, but... Kieran in the, the UK one, the guy who was uh, seduced and he came and he made it quite close to the end mm. and then he got knifed and he, he put out some clues in his That's banishment. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. I feel like we are going to get that level of stuff. I, like absolutely. Next week it looks like there's already Darth Vander's crying. You know, it's going to be... Is that her name? Yeah. 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 Did you uh, take note of the handwriting during the banishment? Because there were some interesting interesting tales there. I was asleep again. I was of asleep. Of course, you saw nothing. Um, I mean, Lauren, when Lauren wrote Dylan, it was beautiful. It was like calligraphy. Oh, we won't see that again. We won't see that again. Matt Heath, when he wrote Colin, Comic Sans. Like, <laughs> literally <laughs> a beautiful recreation of Comic Sans. Kings look like he wrote his with like the sort of gnarly nub end of a piece of chalk. It was just a sort of a smudge. <laughs> It's great. It feels like that. That's another, just another little Easter egg for everyone to be able to like read into the people's personalities based on because it makes sense that a beautiful, graceful dancer would have beautiful, graceful handwriting. Mm. Yeah, like was her last chance to kind of stay in it. But she had already re- like her face said it all. I know. Oh my god. I know. Shocker. And that's it. That's it for week one of the traitors. So if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed this, and you want to hear more, which you most definitely do. In fact, anyone who wants extra. Real pod content should be signing up to our Substack because there will be free stuff for everyone. But if you want this particular pod, you are going to have to pay for it. Just, you know, less than a cup of coffee a week kind of thing, you know? You don't need that caffeine. You need this. You don't need you that need... big can of C4. You don't need to smash that before you do anything. You can just have a nice real pod. That will give you natural endorphins. <laughs> yeah, and this is, this is you know, we know, we know our diehard fans – Need this, need this injection of Real Pod every week. So do make sure you go check out the Substack, see what it's all about. It's therealpod.substack.com. I was about to say at, like an email address. <laughs> I'm kind of amazed that you do. I was waiting for it. I was like, oh no, she's doing it right. I, I still don't know what Substack is, so you could have done that and that would have been fine. <laughs> uh, also, don't forget. Thursday is going to be the premiere of The Real Pod Presents Remember When. And we've got a really big pop culture moment to look back on, so make sure you join us for it. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to T.I. here for recording. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll see you on the Substack next week. From the Spin-Off Podcast Network, you've been listening to The Real Pod, hosted by me, Jane Yee, along with Alex Casey and, most of the time, Duncan Grieve. Our producers are T.I. Here Butler and Samuel Robinson. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.